Hi, my name's Beth and I'm from WA and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what's going on in the family law courts behind closed doors. What I'm about to tell you, I truly believe could have been avoided if someone had just listened to me and my children and all the other women out there who are telling similar stories in the courts today. There's no need for kids to die, there's no need for suicides and there's no need for violence, but we need someone to listen to us. My ex-partner is currently in jail. He's serving 16 years after torturing and assaulting and attempted, he was convicted of attempted murder towards my mother and I. Um, he's a man who uh, has beaten my children with wooden and metal rods. Um, after we were separated, I found out I was pregnant and he beat me in the stomach, kicked me in the stomach, telling me he wanted to kick that baby out of me so he could stay with his other, with his partner, his new partner. I have tried repeatedly to get restraining orders, you know, contact orders for my children, and over and over and over again, I have, been, I have failed. Um, after he kicked me in the stomach when I was pregnant, I managed to get an interim restraining order. Um, when I feared that the kids were in danger, I tried to get a no contact, and constantly I've been told by the solicitors and the courts that if I attempted to do these things, that it would not be in my best interest and the courts could force visits and force um, the children to have to see their father, so I've backed down. In their view, that now that he's in prison, the children are safe, so there's no reason why they can't have visits. I've actually managed to get a uh, not for the moment no contact order. I would like to have a permanent no contact order. The children have been incredibly traumatised by what's happened. Um, I was stabbed 31 times, half my hair was ripped out, my mother's eye socket was broken when her head was smashed repeatedly on the tiled floor. We were hogtied and tortured for hours. My children are old enough to understand what's happening. They see what's happening to me and it's not just about being beaten, it's watching other people get beaten and this is very traumatic to kids. Just when I think the family's starting to get over something, he's able to make contact again, even from prison, and we're back to square one. We just need to look after these children. This is our duty. It's my moral obligation as a mother, and I believe it's the community's obligation to start speaking up against this. Kids don't need to die. Parents don't need to suicide. This does not need to happen, but the courts need to change the way they're hearing us. They don't need to hear hysterical. They need to hear women who are screaming for help. Please help us. Thank you.